Hey guys, Addict Cyclist here. Just wanted to do a quick recap on uh, Chris Miller, uh, where Chris and Jesse talk about Factor versus the SL8. Just wanted to give my real world experience of owning both of both bikes here and kind of give my initial assessment. Uh, I still have to put some miles here on the SL8, but just wanted to kind of run down a few things here. So uh, if you've been following along with the channel, great, appreciate it. Um, there are four or five videos now on the SL8 comparing uh, how I feel it rides um, in terms of speed, stiffness, yada, yada, yada. Uh, so if you want to go through the library to kind of, you know, get caught up, that that's great. Appreciate it. I uh, wanted to touch on a few things here. So um, both bikes, when I've compared previously, Factor and Specialized SL8, you know, both both are fast. Both do everything that they claim to do very well. Um, they just have a kind of a different vibe. Um, and I just kind of wanted to go through some of the things that I've noticed. So one, quality control. So Factor, I think, has a, the tick up here on um on quality control obviously it's more boutique and they're done and made in smaller batches um they're not just a mass-produced brand and obviously all the uh, manufacturing is done in-house where i believe specialized outsources their their carbon in a factory that uh, i think it's merida uh, if i'm not mistaken uh that does all of the uh the work on the frame here so as far as quality control you know i mean all in all the fit and finish is pretty good on here i mean there is like a small little paint run that you can't really see uh with the camera um, and kind of like where they're painted, there's like a little bit of like, you can see where they were masked off. So again, nothing crazy here, there's nothing wrong with the paint itself, but in terms of quality control, because again, it's, it's done on a more mass scale, I think that the quality control and factor is a little bit better. And obviously you can also be, uh, be more customizable in terms of its color choices and so on and so forth. Uh, fit, so for me coming off of a factor 54, it's actually a 55, uh, and the only choice of a uh, setback post is either zero, uh, millimeter offset are 25 and I actually fit better on this true 54 from specialized with a 15 mil setback I'm actually in the middle of the rails here uh, with the 100 mil stem where on my factor I was running a zero offset uh, and my saddle was pushed back as far as it can go right at the stop here so um, I think the fit is a little bit better on the specialized for me personally again running the same 100 millimeter stem uh, and found myself fitting a little bit more uh, comfortable here on a true 54 with a 15 mil setback. Um, the Ostro came with a 25 or a zero, so I fit better on the zero. The 25, I was, I was way pushed forward. Uh, wasn't going to work at all, so I had to make the zero work um, versus the 25. And again, I was pushed back basically right up against this stop here. Uh, so again, it worked. Um, but I feel like, you know, being on this true 54, it just fits me a little bit better. And I can feel that pretty, 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 pretty well, uh, in terms of value. So it depends what you want. You know, if you're comparing like builds for like builds, you know, they are very comparable. I think a pro model specialized, um, which is the frame here. If you were to get Altegra, I think it's around nine K on specialized this site. And it's the same thing basically on factor, uh, with the factor getting a little bit of a tick up because you are getting. Um, the option to spec the bar right length, uh, in this case, width, the stem length, the set pack, the um, cassette size, the, um, the crank arm length. Uh, sometimes you can choose the uh, crank um, ring you know, size. Um, you can choose tube type or tube tires. Um, you can also mix and match different depths of wheels. So it gives, gives you the more customizable experience um, overall. So I, I will tick that up to factor. Not that I had a problem sourcing anything that you see here. And this build cost me uh, a, a lot less than 9000 I think it was $7,165 compared to retail, what Specialized is offering and what Factor is also offering. And again, I love Factor, so I, I did take that into consideration when I was building this bike. But how I source these parts wholesale on the group set, uh, some takeoff on the wheels, uh, a friend had a takeoff on the bar, uh, I had the saddle, um, and a couple other bits that I got that I got uh, from overseas that I didn't pay any sales tax on and, and minimal shipping. So I built this bike cheaper than I could have got a Factor for or if I could have got a Specialized uh, Pro off the website. Um, now, when it comes to customizing, right, I think Factor is still getting the win here because the price point for a Dura-Ace and a red build is, is still less than Shimano's retail pricing for the similar product. I think it's close to, I think, I think 12000 um, for a, call it red or, or Dura-Ace versus 14000 U.S., uh, for a, a uh, an S-Works 
right, for that, that same group set offering here. Uh, but again, you know, if you have a friend or if you have a hookup or if you have a good bike shop that's willing to work with you, you know, obviously you're, that you're not going to pay that. But again, we're, we're comparing retail for retail where factors direct to consumer, they don't charge any, any shipping or, or VAT tax. Uh, so there is some value there in terms of what you're getting for the price, um, you know, versus going to a retailer or buying from Specialized Direct on, on its website. Um, what, I, what I will give a little bit of a tick up for Specialized coming off the Ostro is, again, the Ostro and Factor uses TechStream Ture Carbon Fiber, which is probably at par, if not higher level than what the Ture 1000 or 1100 is being used on Pinarello. Um, with that, it's very light. It's very stiff. Um, the, 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 the pencil stays on the factor do take big hits, but what that carbon layup and, and, and that, that, that carbon type is not good at is dampening on the small stuff or the small chatter or like chip seal uh, and things like that, where a lot of feedback was coming through the frame, right? Into my hands and into my, into my, 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 my ass. Um, and it, and it just kind of felt like. All right, so yes, you can definitely tell that this is a race frame. It's more chattery. You know, it does feel a little stiffer when you stand up on the pedals. Um, but when you're dealing with this bike here with the SL8, is that because the frame and, and, the, and the wheels are, are you know, very light package, I feel like it does jump underneath you when you're applying power to the pedals while you're seated a little bit more than, again, my, my Vactor Ostro version one. I, I can't speak on version two. Uh, but that's just something that I noticed here. And I think that in order to get the weight comparable to an SL8 complete build is you have to use black ink wheels that are about 1,280 grams or some Chinese carbons to get it to be in the same arena here as an SL8 um, or S-Works SL8 because it needs those lighter wheels because the frame set is between 200 and 300 grams heavier, uh, all respective for the same size when you're comparing the SL8 to the Ostro. Um, what I will say, is that the ride on the SL8 is more comfortable. Um, I, I, I don't know what it speaks to. I, I assume that has to do with the layup um, and the seat post. And I feel like the R&D that Specialized has is, is, is industry leading. Obviously they have their own wind tunnel. You know, they're very good with carbon layups. And I feel that they definitely have the edge here in terms of making a good complete bike because they've got R&D that nobody else can touch. It'll most, most Manufacturers have to rent space in a wind tunnel, and the, the majority of the time it's done through uh, CFD, and they have to see if it works. Where specialized between CFD, you know, between use in the in the, in the tunnels, between their riders' feedbacks and in, in the world tour, I think they've got a better package in terms of designing a, a, a better uh, bike when it comes to addressing all of the qualities that that you might be looking for. And again, that that's that's subjective. I'm not putting factor down by any means that they're great and I would still consider a factor any day of the week. Uh, but I feel like that kind of gives the, the edge up here on, on, uh, on Specialized. Um, what I did want to kind of touch on is resale, right? Which is important to me because I don't hold bikes for more than two, three years. I swap out while there's still some equity in it. And when I say equity, let's just give you an example. I paid $8,200 for my Ostro and I sold it to a friend for uh, $6,800. And that was a deal. The list price on it was 5,300 and you can easily get 5,500, but it was a quick sale. It's going to stay in our local group ride. And I was happy to help out a friend. But when it comes to resale, what I noticed when I had the factor up for sale versus my Cervelo is that I was getting flooded with my Cervelo. Flooded. You know, I couldn't keep up, you know, with all the people that were interested. And I was just kind of have to go through all my Facebook messages and pink bike messages where when I put up the factor, I definitely had some interest but it didn't give the same volume because of that brand recognition, right? People want to be on a Specialized. People want to be on a Trek. People, not everybody wants to be on a Cannondale, but Cannondale, you know, is, is still that, that big brand recognition. So for resale, Specialized, and I, I can speak to this personally, is that when I had my S-Works Epic, I actually, a year later, got what I actually paid for because I got a little bit of a discount on it. So I was able to resell it for what I paid for it, and a guy picked it up that was in Brazil, and we used one of our friends in Miami uh, that had a friend over there that wanted to move the bike. So I actually got all my money back. Now, that doesn't happen every time, but with a, with a, with a specialized, with a tarmac, you know, whether it be Pro or whether it be S-Works, you know, you're not taking a huge hit on it if you got the bike at a reasonable price. Hopefully, you've got a hookup for that. 
Um, so factor, again, I wasn't seeing the same volume. Yes, I did end up selling it and I did have someone uh, that was off of, off a of bicycle um, or bicycle uh, that wanted it that was in Texas. But like I said, I just didn't get swarmed with interest, I guess, because, you know, it specializes that brand. Same thing when I had a stump jumper. I sold my stump jumper in less than a week. I sold my Epic in less than three days. Um, so the, And I sold my S-Works uh, Expert Epic uh, in less than five days. I have never sold the bike uh, that fast, or in this case, uh, that fast at all, uh, unless it came down to specialized. So for me, knowing that I can you know, trade out this frame in the next two, three years and knowing that I don't have to sit on it and I'm going to get you know, near close to maybe what I paid for because, again, I got a good deal on it. Uh, that gives me the peace of mind knowing that I can swap out, try something new where I'm not going to be buried in, uh, in, in a frame here and just kind of either, either have to choose to sell it at a, at a deep, deep discount or just keep it for the sake of owning it because you don't want to give it away. So just those are some things that I wanted to touch on. You know, Chris and Jesse did a phenomenal job of breaking it down and, and so on and so forth. And I want to give them a kudos because they definitely do a, do, do a great job and just want to touch on some of the things that I just wanted to add uh, or clarify in terms of my personal experience from owning both brands. And uh, I would never not own a factor again and I will never not own a Specialize again. Both are phenomenal and they did, like I said, you're not... You're not really winning with one over the other. It's coming down to price. In my, in my opinion, you go with whatever value is important to you and what's important to your pocket. And then whether it's specialized or whether it's factor, then so be it. Uh, but don't be deterred to pick up one of these bikes over the other because I think they they're both do everything equally as well. Uh, some have a little bit more of an advantage than others and, and vice versa. Uh, both incredible bikes. So if you have an opportunity to get one at a good deal, uh, whether it's a, a resale or whether it's uh, retail or you have a friend at a local bike shop, you know, definitely, you know, don't, uh, don't hesitate to pick up either of these bikes. So just wanted to get that out there and uh, shoot me uh, any messages on the, uh, on, the, on the posting. Appreciate it. Thank you.